What's up guys, Scatter Rampage here. So today we have another Funko Pop Collector's Guide video and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the cheapest and safest way to ship a Funko Pop. Let's check it out. And if you're new here, make sure to click that subscribe button and like button for daily pop content and awesome videos just like this one. As well as make sure to follow me on Instagram, join the Discord where you can talk to me and fellow collectors, join my Facebook group where you can buy, sell, and trade your Funko Pops. You guys can also become a Patreon where you can get your name thrown at the end of my video. You guys can get a follow back from me on your social media of choosing. And I also put up a mystery box here where you get a pop sent to you every single month. This one is the cheapest and safest way to ship a Funko Pop. So I pulled down a common and I also pulled down a grail that I'm gonna show you guys how I ship them and how I believe they should be shipped. And obviously guys, this is my personal opinion on how I think a pop should be shipped, or this is the safest way or cheapest way, just from everything that I've seen and my personal experience. All right guys, so I wanted to start off with the safest way to ship a pop, whether it be a common pop, whether it be a grail slash exclusive pop. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of both. So the boxes that I use are from Staples. So these ones are about 75 cents a piece, which actually really isn't that bad for a, um, a pop size box. So this is eight by six by six so you can most likely buy these in bulk from anywhere but i feel like staples was a really really good deal at 75 cents a piece obviously if i bought more i could get a better deal i know they were having a like buy five get uh it was like a really good deal at one point during christmas time so i'm waiting for that deal to come back around and then i'll buy a bunch of boxes so but these are the boxes that i like to use to ship in they're really really great boxes they're definitely thicker for um shipping pops in my personal opinion i really do like these boxes and they are definitely my go-to boxes i'm glad i found them um, obviously there's tons of boxes out there but like I said this is my go-to box and it's an affordable price in my opinion all right guys so obviously you're gonna tape up your box like you normally do so we have the bottom of the box all taped up so that's basically what it looks like it's actually very spacious so I'll show you what a pop looks like just in it so that's what it looks like alone with no protection obviously that is not how you want to ship the pop obviously so the best way, in my personal opinion, to ship a pop is in a box sorter over a protector. I mean, there's hard protectors, which is, I mean, almost pretty much just as good as a box sorter, but not as great because it can still get crushed. This one isn't really like my favorite type of box sorter, in my opinion. I like the ones that actually have a lid enclosed. I feel like they're way more sturdy, but these are pretty sturdy as well. And this one came from GameStop, and I believe some other companies use these as well. But basically, you just throw it in there. And there's also something else you can do as well, which is you can take a pop protector, and you can throw the pop in the protector, and I'll actually show you guys really quick. You can throw the pop in the pop protector and then put it in the box sorter. I personally don't recommend this just in case um, if the box gets squeezed, then everything will like, I feel like the box already because it's so tight squeezes the protector in it, um, a little bit and then it messes up the corners, I feel like. All right guys, so I got it in there with the protector. Uh, so just to show you guys, so basically, these ones have the little corner pieces so it does not fly out. Like I said, it's extra protection obviously and it's not like terrible, terrible, but I do feel like it's squeezing the pop in there a little bit. So I would say do that one at your own risk. It's not squeezing it too bad, but I feel like after a while it would, but it is in there pretty snug and secure. And the one big reason I do not recommend putting a pop in a protector and a sorter box because it's like it's added protection like i said but it's because of weight reasons and we'll get into that when we get to the um prices and cheapest shipping options um but still it just adds extra weight to it that you don't really need when you're using the bubble wrap so basically i'm going to show you guys it, i'm going to show you guys a two-way step basically so you take your bubble wrap and this bubble wrap like this is completely fine it's a thinner bubble wrap i do have a thicker bubble wrap over here that i was gonna you know show you guys as well like this is a thicker bubble wrap versus this one but um, this one's this one's good to use but i feel like it's a little over the top when you're using a box sorter and everything i guess so you take your bubble wrap and your pop sorter you wrap it around the pop sorter obviously as you would but most people do it like this they take the pop they just wrap it in this and then they throw it in the box and then they call a day and ship it like that. That's what a lot of people actually do. And it, it honestly, it's just terrible. You should not ship a pop like that. It's going to get damaged. It's going to get thrown around like that. I'm telling you guys, it's, it's going to happen. And it's just, it's no good. Okay, right, so like I was saying before, you take the bubble wrap. And I would say that one sheet or two sheets is usually fine. And these are thicker boxes, so they don't get like crushed as easily as a you know a typical box would. Like Amazon boxes are really, really not that great. That's a good example for you guys. So basically that's how you wanna wrap it. I would say maybe two layers if it's a more expensive pop, um, but you can also use the thicker bubble wrap, which would be able to wrap around once and be just enough. So most people tape the ends. Sometimes you can tape the ends, sometimes you don't have to tape the ends. You can just kind of throw it in there like that and then the ends will kind of puff out against the sides for added protection. But 
basically that i mean that's how you ship your pop i mean this one's a little snug in there because i didn't do a good job of like wrapping around the bubble wrap obviously but this this is basically how i would ship my pop with bubble wrap around it and a box order like i said i don't recommend these box orders because they are longer for this kind of box and versus the actual like gamestop ones or the um hot topic sorters that you get that actually close so these ones are longer so it's fit, fitting more snug in the box but based off like if it crushed this way it wouldn't nothing would happen because you have the corner pieces that are um protruding out and it's like protecting it like that so it's just kind of like it's really good in there it's really snug in there all right guys so now when you're shipping a grail funko pop this is like very very important for you guys to pay attention to when you're shipping a grail funko pop i recommend always a stack or some kind of like acrylic case or something something like a hard hard type plastic case like i have like this one's a harder case. Like I don't think this one's a chalice one, but chalice is a 0.50 millimeter ones is a good example. I would say a pop over a hundred dollars. You should not ship in a plastic protector, a hard protector, like hard, hard, like stack case one is recommended for any grail over a hundred dollars, really anything over $80 in my personal opinion, just because if it gets damaged, then you're going to lose all that money, um, all that money you got. And then on top of losing value on the pop as well. So I would say it's best not to risk it. I would say anything over 150 or more, really maybe like 130 ish or more you, I would recommend double boxing it. And what I mean by that is literally double boxing the pop. It's worth spending the extra money so the grail gets there intact and not damaged, obviously. So, or you could ship it like this and I would recommend using thicker bubble wrap. I would recommend using a lot of layers of bubble wrap um, like that. Like honestly, if I ship this like this, it would be fine because of the hard stack, but I wouldn't ship it like this just because that's tacky to do when they, somebody spent $150 on your pop. So here's a 10 by eight by seven box in the box. Actually the eight by six by six one actually fits in it. And then when you close it down and everything it should fit in, or it, honestly it would fit sideways as well. So that's a really good example of double boxing. All right guys, so I'm going to show you what I mean by double boxing now. So here is the thicker bubble wrap on the pop. I recommend the thicker bubble wrap. It's really, really awesome. And you don't have to use multiple sheets like you would for this one. So double boxing, and this is really for, I would say $150 pops or more. You can protect a pop and not have to double box it. But um, with the thicker bubble wrap as well, you run into the problem of, especially with a stack, the fact that it's not gonna fit as well in this box. But when you're double boxing it, it really doesn't matter because um, the outside box is gonna give you that extra protection anyways. So we have the box in there and it's protected by the stack and the thicker bubble wrap. So we're, what we're gonna do is you would normally tape this box up as well and then you throw it in that one and that's basically double boxing it. And if you wanna add even extra protection, you guys can throw a bubble wrap around the sides. And this is really like, this is steps for like a thousand dollar grail or, you know, sometimes you can even triple box it and be really, be really, really safe as well as adding like um, signature requests or insurance to the box, obviously. Or you could do this. You could basically put the grail in the box like this, just to show you guys, put the grail in the box like that. And then you could wrap it in layers and layers of protection if you're looking for that extra added protection. So like the pop doesn't move around too crazy or just giving it a little wiggle room so it's not like snug and compact in there. So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by really packing the box. So here I'm gonna wrap Beerus and this is already like two sheets of bubble wrap in itself. And this is a thicker bubble wrap compared to like one of these. So I'm gonna wrap Beerus in this and honestly you can barely see the pop already. So that's a really good sign as well. So if you throw it in the box like that, I mean, honestly, this one's not going to get damaged because the bubble wrap's so thick, but I recommend, you know, you just throw, basically you just throw in like bubble wrap around it. Like you just throw it, you just throw in stuff around it, bubble wrap around it, wrap the bubble wrap around it. A really cool thing you could do as well is it's really time consuming though, is get tape and tape the bubble wrap around the sides and then really fill in the box. Like you could fill in the box with like newspaper after you wrap it in bubble wrap obviously the pop itself but you could fill it just filler items to add that extra protection and fill the room in the box so it's not just you know shaking around everywhere all right guys so in my personal opinion those were the safest ways to ship like a grail pop or a common pop or an exclusive pop basically an eight by six by six box is one of the best pop boxes in my opinion pop box sizes is what i mean and it really fits that pop in there snug like that's a grail pop in there and that's really, really safe shipping because it's a thicker box. You got the bubble wrap and then you got the stack, of course, as well. And if I shipped it like this, honestly, I don't see it being damaged at all. Like I have full faith in that and I haven't had any pops arrive damaged um, yet. 
other than um, not from my packaging anyways, except, you know, you have USPS playing football with your boxes sometimes. So that's a really scary thing to do. So that's why you add the extra protection and really take the time to ship it so it gets to the buyer safely and you don't have to deal with any claims or fees. All right, guys, so before we get into the shipping details and how much everything costs and everything, I recommend you guys grab a scale, which this one is a scale that uh, I think it weighs up to like 50 or 60 pounds. And I bought it on eBay or Amazon for like 15 bucks, which honestly wasn't that bad. And I really needed one. It's great for weighing your pops. Don't guesstimate on it like I have been. Get a scale, spend the 15 bucks because it's definitely worth it and it helps you in the long run to save some money. All right guys, so here is where I ship all of my packages, which is via PayPal shipping. They are one of the cheapest options and you save a lot of money on there. So I use Chalice Collectibles address as an example. Um, it's a really, really far, it's California. It's about 3000 miles away and it's on the other side of the country. So I figured I would use the farthest address just to show you guys how much a pop is to be shipped that far. All right guys, so this is what the create a shipping label um, page kind of looks like. So you can go with USPS, you can go with UPS, but US USPS is going to be the cheaper option here. You have multiple options, which media mail is if you're kind of sending like a book or or a movie or a piece of paper and I wouldn't recommend using that for a pop because you're gonna get charged um, that extra postage for trying to skip out on USPS we also have the uh, priority mail Express service which is way more cheaper if you want to get it really really fast as well as like extra um, insurance I think that's what that is I'm not really sure uh, ground service I recommend for like bigger like bulkier uh, purchases so if you ship like I want to say like nine ten pops in a big box they're really that's really your go-to shipping option I would recommend UPS or FedEx for that. You can probably get it cheaper there for bigger packages. But what we're gonna focus on right now is first class mail. And you can go with package, you can go with like large package, it doesn't really matter. And obviously, like I said, this is where the um, weight comes into play. So I always put 16 ounces regardless. The price is gonna be the same. Sometimes it, it really fluctuates depending on how close you are. So let's say I put 11 ounces in and I'm shipping that pop to Chow's Collectibles in California. So you calculate the shipping costs and then it'll do this little thing, it'll load for a second, and then it'll show you what the price is, which is normally around five bucks. So like if you put it at 11 ounces here, it's 446, which is really, really awesome. And as an example, I'm gonna put in the max weight, which is 16 ounces with this shipping option. So if I calculate the shipping cost, it's normally always under $6, which is like the more ideal price to ship a pop in, because normally, typically when you're shipping a pop, it's anywhere from five to $8, depending on what shipping service you use, which is, whether it's first class or prior priority mail. Um, so like this one is 570, for example, and that's on the other side of the world. So that's going to be the max that you ship it for 16 ounces. The cheapest way to ship a pop would be $5 and 70 cents, unless you have some other sort of discounts, anything like that. I'm sure there are chip cheaper shipping options out there, but this is the cheapest one that I found. And it's really, really easy to use. Um, like I said, you just print out the label from your printer um, as you would normally, and then you stick it on the box and ship it out. It, and it saves time a lot because you don't have to go to the post office. You can just print your label online, slap it on there and drop it off at the uh, post office. So the post office classifies anything under like, I think it's like 13, 14 ounces um, to be first class mail, but PayPal does it a little different. They up it to uh, exactly a pound. So at the post office, if you took this 16 ounce package, they're no, most likely going to charge you like eight, nine dollars, maybe $10 depending on, because it's California, it's really fat, far. So I mean, it can even be up to like $12 max for one pop on even on USPS's website. So it can be a $12 max for like one pop if you go to the actual store sometimes. And that's what's really sucks. And that's why I like creating my labels online because it's significantly cheaper. So if we went to um, priority mail, let's do the regular one. And we did, uh, what you wanna do for this one is package slash thick envelope, just because if you use the flat rate boxes, it's gonna charge you more because that is their specific box that they use for certain rates. So you also always want to go with package slash thick envelope then you would put in how many pounds it is let's we're just going to go with uh one pound and zero ounces and then we'll put the length or the dimensions as eight by six by six oops uh by six so not 66 what is wrong with me okay so we'll do that and then if we calculate the shipping it should be i want to say it's probably going to be around eight nine bucks maybe I'm not sure with California all the time. Yeah, see, we have 842. So that is if you want to ship a uh, more expensive pop, like I said, anything like $55 or over. And then it also comes with that $50 insurance, which is really, really awesome as well. And the great thing about the insurance option, obviously that most of you guys know, if the buyer gets the pop, and it's only slightly damaged, it has like a crease or something from um, shipping when the box got crushed or something, and they still want the pop, you can file for that claim with USPS for the full value of the pop, and then you can send 
the partial refund back to the seller out of that so you're not losing any money that's why i say it's best to ship priority mail or with any insurance on higher pops because it saves your butt in the end when the shipping company like really ruins your box or it does not get there um as it was supposed to so basically those would be the cheapest ways to ship a pops obviously the price is going to go up the more weight you add the higher the package dimensions everything like that you can play with it a little bit and repack the box as many times as you need to to get to that certain weight as long as the box is safe then I mean, that's what matters at the end of the day, and you're trying to save money at the same time. So if you guys can package the box safely and save money, then you benefit in both ways. And this is a special link that PayPal has because you can only really use this if you sell something via PayPal, and then you can print it based um, from your, or via your activity tab, you can print it from their address specifically on PayPal. So this is a special link you have to find, and I'm gonna list it down below um, in the description for you guys to um, use specifically, so you guys can save it as a bookmark and start using this and saving money. because. I'm sure most people are spending more on postage than they think and this is definitely one of the cheapest ways out there all right guys so this has been another Funko Pop collector's guide video it was really awesome to do I really had a lot of fun doing this and hopefully it helps some of you guys on um, ship pops cheaper and safer and like I said before I'm always trying to do new collector guide videos so if you guys have any suggestions on a video you would like to see on the channel make sure you leave a comment down below big shout out to all my patrons I appreciate you guys so much you guys are freaking legendary and awesome if you guys would like to become a patron the link is down below but anyways guys that's it for me. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Bye.